Hi everyone and welcome back to another one of our instructional build videos. On today's build video we are going to show you how to build a NEMA 23 linear actuator that's utilizing our belt drive system. As you can see this is just a really cool use of the open builds modular system to create this awesome design. We're utilizing our NEMA 23 motor mounting plate along with our idler pulley plate and our smooth idler pulley wheel to create a nice gantry system that has smooth linear movement. I know this is definitely a really cool way to inspire people seeing this operational right here in front of you. This is honestly just a really cool example of how you can apply this to many of your builds along with other motion systems that you have in mind. So without further ado, let's go ahead and start building. Okay, on this first step we are going to be assembling our 20 millimeter gantry plate. So what we need to gather for this step is four of our solid Delrin V wheels, two eccentric spacers, two six millimeter aluminum spacers, four M5 25 millimeter screws, four nylon hex nuts, four precision shims, and right here I have a wheel kit broken out for you, subtracting the precision shim and nylon hex nut. These parts are all you will need to assemble the wheel. So let's go ahead and start there. Grabbing the shell, simply place the bearing in the front face. Make sure that clicks into place and then turn it over, add your precision shim and close it in with your additional bearing. Just like so and it's that easy. That's your wheel assembly. So that will give us four wheels in total here. The precision shims and nylon hex nuts come from your wheel kits. So let's go ahead and move on to the gantry plate. Making sure that we have the eccentric side identified as well as the fixed side of wheels identified. We are going to place our 25 millimeter screws in each one of these holes. So let's go ahead and insert those screws now. From there I like to place the plate on its back. That way when I stack my additional parts on top I don't have to worry about the screws falling out. So from there, once again, paying attention to our fixed side of wheels, which will be the aluminum spacer side and the large set here for the eccentric side. Let's go ahead and grab one of our eccentric spacers and you'll see the stamped end here on the eccentric. This is the fully open position. So this is the furthest point that your wheels will be away from the track. So as you can see how it's an offset hole here. As you rotate this in, you will tighten the wheels and add friction to your rail, which is exactly what you want. Now you can't over tighten this or have it too loose so we'll go over that once we get into the eccentric adjustment here on the rail but just wanted to point that out so the fully open position we want to face away from the fixed wheels so I'm simply going to place it into each one of these holes with that stamped side facing away do that for both screws from there add your precision shims on top of the eccentrics and then add your solid Delrin V wheels as you can see I spun that around on the screw. If you ever get that precision shim, see how it's slid over in the middle here? You can either use your ball driver, sift it into place, or you can simply spin the wheel on the screw and it'll find the center of gravity. Once again for the second screw. And then add on the nylon hex nuts. So for our fixed side of wheels, let's go ahead and add our 6mm aluminum spacers. Next are precision shims, your wheels, and your nylon hex nuts. From there, let's go ahead and tighten the system down. Alright, once you have your assembly tightened down, let's go ahead and take our V-slot linear rail and let's run our plate on to the 20 by 20 section of the 20 by 40. So once you have that on top of the rail, you'll see that you have a wobbling motion on your gantry plate. Now the way that we're going to correct that is by adjusting our eccentrics. So on each one of these wheels on the eccentric side, we're going to adjust each eccentric in the same direction. Let's so go ahead and grab your spanner wrench and let's rotate these to the right. So what you're looking for is the proper amount of friction on the rail. So as you can see, while holding the gantry plate, if I spin this wheel, I'm able to move it slightly. So the wheel is actually touching the rail. There's friction there. That's precisely what you want for both wheels. Now if this were too loose, you could just spin this out of control and at that point your gantry system is going to wobble. But as you can see with mine, 
It's a good way to test to see if your centrics have the proper preload. You shouldn't see any wobble in the plate. So as you can see, I have a tight lock on the system, and I also have smooth linear motion. So that's precisely what you want. Sometimes it takes a little time to find that proper preload, but that's, that's normal with these eccentrics. Generally, it takes a little time to adjust to how much friction you need to add to your system. But like I said, just have that little spin right on the rail, and that's exactly what you want. So now that we have that assembly complete, let's go ahead and move on to the next step. Okay, on this next step, we are going to assemble our idler pulley plate along with our smooth idler pulley wheel kit. So let's go ahead and gather these parts, our smooth idler pulley plate, two 8mm screws, one double T-nut, and our smooth idler pulley wheel kit. So to start this off, we need to go ahead and assemble this wheel kit. So take your shell, add one of the bearings and the front face here. On the back side of the wheel, add your nylon spacer. Line it up as best you can. And what I like to do is go ahead and take this screw, run it through the wheel, and this will keep this nylon spacer in place. So from there, add your other bearing. Once again, make sure that snaps into place, just like so. Next, add your precision shim on top of the screw. Next, we need to add our 3mm aluminum spacer. Now this is going to connect to our plate. So on this back end of the plate, you'll see a single hole. So go ahead and run your screw through the back side of the plate here and add your nylon hex nut to the screw. Now go ahead and tighten this down. Alright, one thing to keep in mind too when tightening down this wheel is you do not want to over tighten it because you want mobility in the side or pulley wheel. This will have the belt running from the opposite end of the linear rail through the channel and back around this idler pulley. So it's essential that this is mobile. So as you can see, that looks good. So from there, we'll go ahead and take our double T-nut and we're going to run this on the top track for our 20 by 40. So as you can see, our gantry plate is on top of this rail. So on this first slot, go ahead and run your double T-nut into that slot. So once you have your double T-nut in place, make sure to align these two center holes here of the idler pulley plate. Also making sure that the wheel is on the left side of the plate. And let's take our 8mm screws and we will mount that into place. Now once you have this tightened onto the rail, what I like to do is make sure that this plate is seated flush. So I'll crack each screw loose and you'll feel the plate shift once you do that. What we want is for the plate to be at a fully upright position. So just kind of put some force on it from the bottom and then tighten those screws back down. As you can see, the idler pulley is going to affect the tension on the belt once it's tied to our plate. So we will eventually adjust the space between the plate and the rail in order to add that tension to the belt. So once you have this step completed, let's go ahead and move forward. Okay, on this next step, we are going to assemble our NEMA 23 motor to our NEMA 23 motor mounting plate. So in this step, we'll need these parts, our plate, four M5 15mm screws, and four nylon hex nuts. So to get started, this is a good place to find out how you want to adjust your motor as far as orientation, where your wires are going to lay. I generally like to keep my wires hanging down so it'll be beneath my system as it's running across the axis. So as you can see, that's exactly how I'm going to set this motor up. Simply place the motor onto the plate. You should feel it kind of click into place. Align it to each one of your holes on the motor and run your 15 millimeter screws through. From there, I'm going to tie on these nylon hex nuts. So just thread them into place here. Okay, from there, let's go ahead and tighten these screws down. Okay, so once you have the motor attached to your plate, let's go ahead and move on to the next step. Okay, on this next step, we are going to finish up our assembly. Gathering these parts, we need GT3 timing belt, our GT322 timing pulley, two double T-nuts, four 8mm screws, and four zip ties. 
Our tooling for this step will use our M5 ball driver and our 1.5 millimeter ball driver. So to get started here first, we need to mount our motor mounting plate to the same side that our idler pulley plate is mounted. So right here on the 20 by 40, we are going to mount this plate. So simply take two of the double T nuts and let's place them into the front and bottom track of this 20 by 40. Okay, so now taking your motor mounting plate with your motor attached, we need to align this with our double T nuts and use our 8mm screws to mount this into place. So the main thing to pay attention to here is the orientation of the plate. As you can see, a portion of it is sticking up towards my 20mm gantry plate. That's precisely what you want. So this whole system will line up once we run our belt through. So go ahead and place that and let's go ahead and thread in our 8mm screws. Now before you tighten down the screws completely, just make sure your plate is flush with the 20 by 40 And once you know that it's flush, go ahead and tighten these down. Alright, excellent. So now let's go ahead and rotate the system over. We need to add our GT3 22 timing pulley to the motor shaft. So from here, take notice to the flat portion of the shaft on the motor. What we want to do is tie this this pulley so these set screws line up with that flat portion of the shaft and they can properly lock onto the shaft of the motor. So sometimes you'll find that the set screws are a little too far in to place this correctly. So just take that 1.5 millimeter ball driver and loosen these. And then slide it onto the shaft of the motor. And one thing you want to pay attention to is the alignment of both this GT3 timing pulley and the idler pulley wheel at the other side. You want to align this with the center of your 20 by 40 so that looks good right there. I'm going to go ahead and tie this into place. Alright, make sure that's nice and tight. That looks good. So another thing I will mention too is make sure you have enough space between the pulley and the motor. You don't want this rubbing against the system so that looks like just enough space that's perfect. So we have rotation without any rub. That looks good. So now let's go ahead and move on to the belt. So what we need to do with the belt here is run it through the 20 by 40 so here in the center channel. And what I like to do is run this with the teeth side facing up and just feed it all the way through until it reaches the other side. Now one thing that's very important is you do not want this belt to twist so before you wrap this system completely, just make sure there's no twist in your belt, either by looking down the channel or simply feeling the tension. This looks good, so I'm going to run this around my pulley here to my gantry plate, and then once again on the other side to the gantry plate. So now what I want to do is go ahead and run the belt through this hole here on the plate, just like so, and the same for the other side. So that's essentially what you are looking for here before we zip tie our belt. So now if you find that your belt is lacking in length, what you can do is adjust this idler pulley plate here, like we discussed in previous steps. Simply crack these nuts loose and we'll slide this in slightly. The main thing that you're looking for is you do not want your idler pulley wheel to rub against the extrusion. So as you can see, we have plenty of space here. Once again, lifting up on the plate, make sure those screws are in place, tighten that down. And that will give you plenty of room to work with before we make that adjustment to the tension on our belt. So now that I have some length here, I'm going to go to this side. If you have any issues getting the belt out of the track, I just use the ball driver just to lift up on it so I can pull it out. All right. Now starting here at the left side, what I'm going to do is zip tie this to where the teeth are engaged in the belt. So you'll see as I squeeze these together, the teeth lock into each other. So that's exactly what we want. So I'm going to start here at this end and then work my way to the inside. Alright, make sure that's nice and tight. Then I'll take my other zip tie and I'm going to clamp it down near the, the plate here. 
And one thing I like to do is keep the zip ties in the same orientation. So I like to leave the head here sticking up. Alright, perfect. So let's go ahead and move on to the right side here. So same exact thing. And let's finish this up. Alright, that looks great. So now, let's go ahead and cut off the excess. So just grab some snips. So once you have that complete, you'll see that your belt is loose. This is where we are going to tighten this idler pulley plate against our belt. So loosening each one of these screws. Go ahead and pull back, making sure that belt is nice and tight. And then tighten it down. Excellent. So now feeling the tension of the belt, just to make sure that you do have enough tension in the system, you should see a spring in the belt when you press down. So if I were to press down onto the track, it's going to spring right back up. There is no wobble, it's simply a nice spring tension. It's exactly what you want. So once that's complete, now we have a NEMA 23 belt drive actuator. And that looks sweet, guys. Definitely a really cool example, once again, of the Open Builds modular system and how you can utilize this for all different sorts of actuators. This is just one example of many. So thanks for tuning in. Hope this helps and inspires some ideas. Make sure to subscribe and hit that like button, and we'll see you on future build videos.